All the dangling plot threads in Steve Universe has been accumulating into one massive thing. The next war on Earth. As far back as the episode Serious Steven in Season 1, we were spoon-fed tidbits of information concerning the original Gem War, its fallout, and the consequences that followed. While a character up to this point hasn't explicitly stated, we're going to war of Homeworld again, the writing's on the wall. Spoilers for the San Diego Comic Con trailer. Click off in the next second if you haven't checked that out yet. But, Lapis will seemingly be the first one to directly introduce the prospect of a second war. She informs Peridot and assumably Steven, that fleeing from the diamonds has likely incited the foundation for another war, a war she won't be caught up in. The diamonds haven't really been bothered to deploy more than a handful of gems to Earth, let alone launch another full-scale invasion. Despite being aware of the crystal gems being active, the planet is just not on the radar, and this can be chalked up to being under the impression that the cluster is still on track to emerge, destroying the Earth and all of its inhabitants in the process. They haven't exactly caught on that it's bubbled and dormant in the Earth's core, thanks to Steven. Unfortunately for Steven, fleeing from Rose's trial and the Diamonds may have been an indirect death sentence for mankind. I imagine both Diamonds are furious and chicken quite a bit, and with Zircon's case against prosecuting Steven, they may be questioning the other's motives. Nevertheless, as far as Blue and Yellow Diamond are concerned, Steven, or Rose Quartz, is still running around the homeworld, evading being captured or swift shattering, and the Diamonds may not rest until they have her in their clutches. Blissfully unaware that Steven has returned home thanks to Lars's newfound abilities. That being said, in an attempt to make Rose suffer and lure her out, the Diamonds, more specifically Yellow Diamond, could very well deploy more soldiers onto Earth, targeting humans and the Crystal Gems, quickly spiraling this already desperate situation into, you guessed it, war. We can already assume Homeworld has thousands and thousands of soldiers ready to take on whatever Rose course throws at them, but the Crystal Gems? Not so much. Their so-called army is pretty small. Or is it? Let's talk about that today on Crystal Clear. This episode of Crystal Clear is brought to you by Quid. Quid is an immersive, hands-on app where you can collect digital stickers, trading cards, and toys. Based off of your favorite series such as The Amazing World of Gumball, Regular Show, Rick and Morty, and of course, Steven Universe. How do you obtain these wonderful items of merriment, you may ask? with coins. And you can get free coins just by logging in every few hours. There's also plenty of freebies, but be warned, packs sell out and fast, so you gotta hustle if you want the collectible you're seeking. Without a doubt, my favorite part about Quid is the feature to use the stickers you collect in everyday texting conversation. Gems over emojis any day. You can make some new acquaintances by trading your cards, stickers, and toys with other users on the app. And hey, we're on there too. Username is Ostrich Vox. Quid is available for iOS and Android, link in the description. Now let's get on Crystal Clear. Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm your host, Ostrick Vox, and let's talk about who will defend the planet Earth in the next gem war. As I said in the intro, the Crystal Gems army at the moment is pretty small. We have Garnet, or if you want to be technical, Ruby and Sapphire, Amethyst, Pearl, Steven, Peridot, Lapis, and Connie. These are just immediate soldiers that wouldn't have to be recruited. That's only seven soldiers, or eight if you really want to count Ruby and Sapphire individually, but Sapphire doesn't fight. This takes us to our segment called What, How, and Why, where we pose a question. In this case, the question here is pretty simple and straightforward. Who will serve and ally the Crystal Gems in the next big war? But we have to look at this from not just who has powers, brute strength, and or the ability to throw hands, but who's a valuable asset in general? Who can think quick on their feet? Who's book smart? Who's street smart? A war isn't won by fist alone. It's a combination of brains and brawn. So we also need to search for who will be a great strategist, which would allow us to bring some beat city citizens into the fold that may be more epic than one would think upon first glance. Remember, it was hinted at, if not directly stated, in episodes such as The Return, Lying to the Movie, Rose's Scabbard, and Sworn to the Sword that humans served in the first gem war. What's unknown is the length of time they served, including when they joined, if they were involved from the get-go, and if they pulled out prior to the diamond attack. With that knowledge and our proposed question, it's time we move on to the next segment of the show and answer said question by forming a hypothesis. Humans are just the beginning what's thrown to the mix of this insane cauldron, but before I can get ahead of myself, let's start with any gems I can take on the mana of crystal gems and fight the good fight. We already went through our main cast of gems, but an obvious candidate and one that kicks off additions nicely is Bismuth. She was already an original crystal gem, but got into a dispute with both Rose and Steven, escalating into violence both times. The root of this conflict was her belief that the Crystal Gems need to even the playing field and shatter what she describes as the elite upper crust of Surf homeworld, 
inventing the breaking point as muscle. This is a very complicated dilemma as neither Steven or Bismuth is in the wrong and ultimately they need to find common ground. I said it before on the show, but I strongly believe Bismuth is just a conversation away with Steven and the gems from being on good terms with Steven and reaching an understanding. She's already close with Garnet and Pearl and hit it off with Amethyst. She isn't Bubble because they hate her or believe she's too dangerous. The true factor here is time. They have to be mentally prepared and have their emotions straightened out before confronting Bismuth because they love her. They care about her immensely and learning what she did to Steven broke their hearts. Well, gems don't have hearts so to speak, but you know exactly what I mean. Once Bismuth is back in action, ready to take on the world, I know she'll be a great addition to the new Crystal Gem army. After all, not only is she immensely powerful, but she's a blacksmith. She could whip up some crazy inventions, and even collab with Paradise and Pearl on a project. Moving on from Bismuth, we have the Famethyst, consisting of surviving court soldiers from the Beta and Prime Kindergarten that we were introduced to in the episodes Gem Heist, The Zoo, and That Will Be All. All episodes that encompass the zoo arc. Now, the situation here is actually a bit more complex than first impressions may lead on. Yes, the Famethyst bonded with our Amethyst quite well, even assisted Steven and Greg's escape after playing a prank on them. They paid no mind except a cheerful goodbye when the Crystal Gems fled, much to Holly Blue Agate's dismay. Yet, unless Amethyst informed them off screen, they are unaware Steven is the world's courts held accountable for shattering Pink Diamond. Thus, from their perspective, Steven's the reason they endured years of abuse under Holly Blue Agus' command, cooked up in a near-abandoned human zoo. Their attachment to Pink Diamond at this time is unknown, but most homeworld gems we meet seem to have an admiration for their diamond. Jasper certainly did towards Pink. While it could be worked out, I do foresee a conflict if and when the Amethyst do learn of Steven's ties to Rose Quartz. Although being close to Amethyst, she could help him get off the hook rather quickly. The Amethyst would definitely make a great case of strength in numbers. As far as we know, there's 28 of them working in the zoo, possibly even more out there if Jasper working under Yellow's court is any indication. Even if most are seen as seemingly defective by homeworld standards, so is our Amethyst and she kicks ass. How their strength measures to a perfect soldier like Jasper's is yet to be seen, but I imagine they all pack quite the punch. Even though the fam of this are a shoe in what about High Blue Agate? Well, I'd like to speculate on the future of her character in a separate episode, but I can see her either staying with Homeworld or defecting over to Crystal Gems just to avoid any possible punishment from Blue Diamond. Now, a true wild card are the Rose Quartz Gems bubbled in the zoo. We don't know anything about them, how they feel about Pink Diamond, how they feel about Rose, subsequently Steven, and their concern towards humans. I've already speculated in the past that Rose Quartzes were made for the zoo and serving humans. Therefore, it's likely that they all would have rebelled against Homeworld at some point because it's an oversight in how they were designed. If I had to make a guess, they could hold some resentment towards Steven due to our Rose shattering Pink Diamond, setting off a chain reaction and causing their imprisonment and stasis for thousands of years. But ultimately, their inclination towards protecting humans will result in them lending a hand in the battle for Earth and its living creatures. We already know how insanely overpowered our Rose and Steven is, so it goes without saying every Rose would be a huge help. Plus, did you see how many of them were bubbled? I feel like this could easily land us in the triple digits. Very briefly, I want to shine some light on Topaz. I do believe she is already on track to become a Crystal Gem, but is taunted by fear. She doesn't want to be separated and shattered. The idea of that paralyzes her. As we saw in the episode Stuck Together, we also have no idea when we'll see her again, but I doubt her character arc is close to being finished for good. I'm confident Steven will run into her again, and this time, take her back with him for good. Now, there's Lars in the off colors, and boy, you better believe I can see them fighting the good fight. Now, I've already discussed the possibility of Lars' fate in the series now that he's a space captain, along with the off colors. Assuming I'm onto something and Lars survives until the end of the series, I definitely think him and the off colors will serve in the war. As I've also said in the past, if we're actually exploring a gem controlled planet, as the San Diego Comic Con trailer implies, I believe any aliens Lars and Steven liberates and assist will return for the climactic battle. Of the series. I'd also like to touch upon Corrupted Gems. If Steven manages to heal a few Corrupted Gems, that'll be an incredible feat all on its own. But if he goes further beyond and can mass heal Corrupted Gems, well first of all, that'd be overpowered as hell. But that also increases the numbers exponentially, with Gems heated that they were either screwed up by the diamonds they served, or that they were doomed for an eternity of suffering, unable to become who they once were. Even if for one way or another, Corruption isn't healed, Corrupted Gems possess more intelligence than meets the eye. They'd still be able to help. It doesn't even need to be said, but Centipedo and her crew are without a doubt top candidates when factoring in Corrupted Gems. If the Crystal Gems could ever get the ships up and running, they make great pilots, and we'd have not only troops on land, 
but air as well. Last but not least, when talking about gems, there's a few more wild cards. One, there's always a possibility that one of the diamonds will defect from Homeworld and its sister crystal gems. Slim, but a possibility nonetheless. We've talked about that in other episodes though. Check out the playlist and watch those if you haven't already. The other huge wild card is Jasper and the Rubies. We know Jasper will return and will likely be uncorrupted, but where will her allegiance be? I don't see her remaining loyal to Homeworld if it comes out that one of the diamonds truly did assist Rose in shattering Pink Diamond, but unless she accepts Steven is not Rose, it's going to be an obstacle persuading her otherwise. As for the Rubies, as I've stated many times before, the show has been laying the foundation for a bond between them and Jasper. They admire and hold her to an incredibly high standard. If she defends I can totally see them defecting as well. Even though this wraps up gems, the list doesn't stop there, as we've gained many allies that aren't gems. I mentioned earlier the prospected humans, more notably BC citizens, joined the war as well. Lars is an obvious start, but to run on the list, Sadie has shown herself to hold her own against a corrupted gem with nothing other than her wit and surrounding environment. Not to mention that gem was invisible. You can't convince me otherwise that she wouldn't make a great addition to the team with her proper training. She may even be more capable than Connie. Ronaldo is very despised by the fandom, for admittedly good reason. However, the dude accurately predicted two major plot points in the show thus far. The presence of the Diamond Authority, along with their plans for the Cluster, and the Human Zoo. He's insanely intelligent, and very ambitious. While Rocknado lightly discouraged him from becoming a Crystal Gem, it doesn't mean it's out of the window for good. Long story short, he'd make a great strategist. I'd actually love to see him collaborate with the likes of Peridot. Why haven't they interacted on screen yet? Onion. Onion is an agent of chaos. Topaz and Aquamarine were a fluke. Give Onion some laser light cannons and all hell will break loose. Enough said. Sour Cream. Sour Cream loves music, and we've seen that he loves blaring music as well. Kiki's even stated before his mixtape ignited a fire in her car. Since Steven Universe loves to integrate its musical elements into the story, if the cure to corruption truly involves some form of a song, perhaps Sour Cream can transmit that sound through his speakers and maybe even a wailing stone. Hell, count Greg in for that too. That's not really related directly into how he contributes to the Mist of War though. Unless he works together with the gems to also develop a melody that combats against the forces of Homeworld, similar to the alleged corruption song, but only weakens them so much. For the rest of the BT citizens, I stand by the armor of the Fallen still being around factoring into their inclusion. There's also Uncle Andy, who's a pilot. Perhaps he can assist in the Crystal Gem's air forces. The icing on the cake for this new Crystal Gem army would be the Watermelon Stevens. And before anyone goes, oh, but they didn't stand a chance against Malachite. Yeah, it was Malachite. Alexandrite could barely even handle Malachite. But the Watermelon Stevens gave the individual gems a run for their money. Not even Garnet could keep up. Not only are the Watermelon Stevens mass-produced, more being made by the day, but their immense power against non-fusions would be extremely effective against homeworld forces. Last we saw them, Mask Island was drifting off into the ocean, so their current whereabouts are a mystery. They'll be back though, they always come back. So with all that said, what's our hypothesis? The new Crystal Gem army will consist of gems, humans, and hybrids alike, being the most diverse army in the series to date. That brings us to our conclusion, wrapping it all up. We have our roster, our reasoning, but what's the probability of the war actually happening? But at the same time, Steven's pacifist nature has been an equally recurring strong theme. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if at the last second, the show subverts our expectations and finds a way out of the war. I'd rather them pull an Avatar The Last Airbender, with Steven in Aang's shoes, finding a peaceful solution to the war. However, this is where I turn the conversation to you guys. Who do you think should be in the Crystal Gems roster for the next war? Do you think there will even be a war at all? Let's get a discussion going in the comments section below. Don't forget we have our yellow diamond and blue diamond t-shirts on the Teespring store, which is moving over to our Stash Riot store soon, so get these before it's gone. We also launched a new Discord server. The old one became quite inactive, and with this new server, all of the roundtable will be more active. Me, the other hosts, our editors, you name it. We have more channels, giveaways, contests, roles, and more. Link in the description. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications so you never miss a Steven Universe video from the Roundtable. And if you want to get the discussion going beyond the comments, you can follow and tweet us at RoundtableVids or me at AustricVox. Be sure to follow our other social media and host while you're at it. All of those are in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Don't forget to download Quid, and I hope you have a beautiful day. AustricVox, signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks.
thanks for watching another video on the roundtable. If you want to get more involved for our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.